Hey everybody, welcome to AI DIY or AI DIY .tech is the website. I've seen a lot of questions on how to create music videos using AI or AI tools to go with your Suno or Udio music that you made. So you want to make a music video and there's people going, how do you do that? I'm not going to go into too much detail uh, against the granular pushing this button, exactly how to do this. It's an overview of the tools I use and a brief glaze over how I use them. And if you're interested in that, go ahead and watch this video. Okay, now the tools that I use, as mentioned before, there's free versions of everything. I'll go through them very quickly. For one thing, so you can sort of jot them down if you're a new user. And another thing, if you're a seasoned user and you're watching this, you can say, hey Matt, that's a terrible thing. Go ahead and comment about down below and then I'll learn something and I'll try it out. Almost always if people, well, I would say always, if people reach out to me through the website or the comments, I do check things out because I do want to get better. And that's really how I found a lot of these tools in the first place. So it's one of the first tools that I use, or the first tool that I use is ChatGPT. And the obvious reasons that you use ChatGPT to ask questions and all that, but you can also get some very low grade starter level images for free. I think in the free version it's called 4.0 Turbo or something like that, which will at this point, as far as I know and remember, create images for you using the Dolly method. Now they're not very consistent images, you can't do too much with them, but as a starting point, if you wanna do this for free, go ahead and use ChatGPT to create those images. The second set of tools that I use, and I won't go into too much detail about this, is Suno and Udio. If you're here, you're probably already producing music and you just wanna learn how to set that to video and use AI to do that, but I will touch on that a little bit. Suno and Udio both have free versions you can use. Check the terms of how you can publish that, but that I use Suno, basically. Now. To create the base level, yes, you can use ChatGPT and Dolly to create your still images. I use Leonardo.ai. Uh, I have the paid version. There's a certain amount of limited use you can use Leonardo for, but I use that because it, to me, it produces very good quality and you can sort of create themes. So there's consistent themes with an image. You can have a person or set in a theme and you can have different angles created, for example where you can't really use ChatGPT so, so much for. And the next tool that I use is Runway version three. This is where you take your still images and animate them. More on one Runway version three later. By the time this video comes out, because I've tried to record it so many times, Sora could be out by OpenAI, in which case, mention it in the comments and say you've been late to the party. And another tool that I use is Canva. Canva, I, it's not really so much used to create the AI stuff, but I like to supplement a lot of the extended video with Canva with stock images or stock video. If you have some other stock video tool that you like to use, use that, but Runway version three is extremely expensive to be able to use for a whole month and have long versions. So I supplement a lot of that with Canva. And finally, I tie it all up with my video editing using DaVinci Resolve. And there's a full on like $400 version of DaVinci Resolve that, you know, Hollywood studios use. For this use case, I haven't grown out of the, the free version of DaVinci Resolve yet. It's extremely powerful. Some of you might use Adobe Premiere Pro. There's a lot of different video editing tools you can use. And there's a lot of free ones out there as well. But I use DaVinci Resolve. Great. Now you've seen all the tools that I've had listed. And I'm just going to suggest if you could hit that subscribe button down below, follow along. The closer I get to monetization of this, the better it'll be for me to be able to start paying for some of those tools from the YouTube slash Google money. That being said, also it getting close to Christmas time right now is time to really knuckle down and think of others. I support a charity called loveheart.org which actually supports the John Fawcett Foundation. John Fawcett Foundation goes out to remote villages in Indonesia and does cataract surgery. So hopefully you do subscribe and at least have a look at the charity. You can donate on my website or just go directly to John Fawcett Foundation website and donate there. So that takes me to the next part, which is creating the music. I use Suno, you can use Udio, whatever you want. Now, the method I did here is I went to instrumental only. You can set the mood or whatever, upbeat, folk, rock, instrumental, EDM track with heavy bass, whatever you wanna do. Suno then produces this and then gives you several generated options to choose from. 
this is what I came up with and what we're gonna work with for the rest of this video. Okay, as mentioned, that's a sample of what we're working with and we're gonna start piecing it together. Okay, now we go into the creating still images. And as mentioned before, there are so many still image creative tools that you can use from text to image. Go ahead and use ChatGPT to get started and create it, but I use Leonardo.ai. So basically this acts as a foundation for the animations. While you can use ChatGPT and Dolly, I've found the Leonardo produces higher quality images and offers much better consistency for complex scenes and characters. In a recent project, I created a single nightclub image. This, this is actually for this project. And in every scene you'll see it was derived from that. If you're unsure how to write prompts, just use ChatGPT and let it help. Ask it to create something like a nightclub scene with monsters and it'll give you a refined prompt. And then you take that prompt and put it into Leonardo. Once you generate your initial image, you can use Leonardo's style reference the, it's a feature to maintain consistency. Now to use that style reference, this is once you created that image. You can generate the one good image and then open the style reference menu under the generations tab, apply your reference image and just ensure that all, that way it ensures all subsequent images match that same style, the lighting and the mood. It just saves so much time and ensures every frame feels cohesive. You don't wanna have, you know, if you're, if you're doing a picture of Peter Rabbit, you don't want your Peter Rabbits to be gray and purple and blue and white. You want it to all be the same or be roughly the same. It's not perfect at this point. AI has a, a ways to go, but this is the best results that I've found. Uh, and here's, a, here's an, an example. Now I'm gonna talk about Canva. Canva is not an absolutely necessary step. This is a bonus one that I hope I get a subscribe for. This is to stretch out what you have and make your money work the furthest. So Canva, it's not just for graphic design. It's a perfect way to add extra visuals to your video. Uh, for example, I use it to find background videos uh, or extra layers for effects. In this project, I searched for EDM in Canva's Elements tab and found animations, photos, and even audio clips. Once you've selected the video, you can set it as your background and adjust it to fit your scene. So you're basically just, it, it's basically the way I use stock video. So if you wanna find stock video somewhere else, you can, I use Canva. And just as a pro tip, if you wanna use the paid subscription like I do and you wanna access HD videos, that's how you do it. It's in the premium content. It's worth it if you're working on larger projects or if you're working on a lot of projects. I use Canva nonstop probably 20 times a day. So this is the video that I've downloaded and I'm gonna be adding it to the video clip later. Okay, I hope you've uh, enjoyed following along thus far. Now we're gonna dive into what you actually do to create those little video shorts, which I use Runway version three. There's probably a lot of other ones. I've tried a lot of other ones so far and the only one that can get results that aren't people's faces melting or their feet turning into you know animals there's probably cheaper ones out there. You actually can use Runway for free, very limited use every month. And you know, a secret hack is to make multiple free accounts. I don't suggest you do that. That's probably a violation of terms, but it's also a big pain too. And free version has its limitation. You might go to prompt to create a video and it might say the servers are too busy, come back in an hour all the paid subscribers are using up the bandwidth or whatever it is. But anyway, this is what we use to turn our still images into animations. So we're basically gonna take our static images and turn them into an animations. And how do we do that? First of all, you go to app.runwayml.com. Runway gives free credits monthly. It's probably about 15 to 30 seconds total for the month. But if you have paid plans like I do, you can basically make a lot more projects. And it's not 100%. Like one of the reasons I wanna have a paid version is you don't get it right the first time every time. So you upload your static image that you created in Leonardo, and then you enter your animation prompt. Humanoid dancing hard in an EDM club with flashing lights. And then you choose your animation length, 
five or 10 seconds. I recommend starting with five to conserve your credits. Runway then generates a dynamic animation based on your input. Sometimes the results are unexpected. Uh, it's not 100% as I mentioned, which it can be fun, but it's a bit unpredictable. If it doesn't turn out right, tweak your prompt or adjust the animation style. Use ChatGPT to help you if your prompts aren't quite well, quite good. Use GPT, it'll say the prompt to use to get it right, then you can just drop it back into Runway V3. Okay, now here's a few examples of outputs that I've generated in run, run, Runway version three. As you see, they're kind of cool. Uh, I wouldn't even bother with Runway version two. I've done it in the past and it was good for the past, but now that three's out, uh, I would just go with that. So that's that's how you do that. That's literally how I go ahead and create those. It might be possible to create you know videos out of nothing in Runway, but I would start with the still images first. Okay, this brings us how we tie everything we did and everything we created all together. Now, I use DaVinci Resolve as my video editing tool. You might need to become familiar with that uh, with some sort of video editing tool. DaVinci Resolve is a high-end one. If, if you can sort of play along with that and use the buttons and, and learn from there, that's fantastic because you can leverage to other things, but there's all kinds of other video editing tools you can use. If you use you know, Adobe Premiere Pro, that's fantastic, use that. I used one called Descript a while ago, which is a lot of editing based on text. You can drag your assets in, things like that. Cool, I'm just gonna get stuck into it. I started some editing of this video already, and I'm just gonna bring us here to, this is what DaVinci Resolve looks like. So I started off with going to the folder where I had all my bits, like the, the images, the, the still video, what I pulled out of Canva, and I dragged it up. If you go to me media pool up here, so you might be in effects or whatever, you go to media pool up here and drag all your assets here. Now, hopefully you gave them a name instead of just you know file one file two file three what their default name down if you haven't done that i would suggest while in the folder in windows or apple whatever you use you name them what they are like for example here is my canva image that i downloaded out of canva here's the other dancing image that i downloaded out of canva here is the dj that i created from Leonardo and then brought to Runway V3 and I called it DJ Action. Now, there's very basic ways to get started with this. This is the first thing you need to do is the media pool. So you put all your media up in there and then you drag your media here. So for example, I drag this DJ thing down onto here to play. And then you can sort of drag the link that you want to match with your audio which is down here and um, match it up here and here. Now, I'm, I don't want to get too much into this because I can complicate things with that. But as you drag your audio down, which is your song, I dragged it onto here. That's where you want to start matching up your video scenes and, you know, extending them like that or cutting them. Uh, to, to match with your audio. Again, I'm not gonna go too much into instruction. This is the tools that I use and, and I'll tell you the buttons that you use at a basic function to get started. So down here, this is your video editing area. You might start off here, right? And, and with a blank screen. You're immediately gonna wanna go here because this is where you edit things. The buttons you wanna use are this little razor button here because you can select parts on your timeline, cut them, and then just select this arrow here, and then you can delete that. You can hit the delete button on your computer and it'll bring it down to here. And those are basically what you wanna do. And, and again, I'm not gonna go into too much. And the last thing you wanna do when you get everything exactly how you want it, you go file, quick export, and I usually choose this, and your resolution is that, and then you export it to the folder that you want to export it to. And when you export it, just give it a name, video, file, EDM, test, whatever you want to do, and then you save it to that folder. And then the output is...
So that's that. All right, I hope you enjoyed that video. Apologies, I, I didn't wanna go into too much detail about the video editing stuff. I really just wanted to show you the process. There's so much content out there on editing on DaVinci Resolve, but I just wanted you to pay attention to the few buttons that you need to get started. Anyway, uh, if you have enjoyed that, this video and you'd like to give a subscribe, please do. Stay tuned for more and we'll catch you next time.